Okay, hi everyone. Uh, I'm just giving you a quick sort of standard glaze uh, session. If you were going to, inf uh, to a dentist and do a quick demonstration, we want to, main thing is, we want to keep it really simple. So uh, I have here our starter kit, our standard glaze, etc. Uh, starter kit. And so the first thing you, you notice here, up here, you've got body stains. That's when I wanted to change, change the shade, if I wanted to go shade darker. For, uh, for whatever reason. But that is something a little more advanced and we don't really demonstrate that. We show them that they're there and we can say, Doctor, if you got the shade guide of a darker shade and you wanna go darker, you can select from these little different bottles a shade, paint it all over the crown and you see it will actually go darker and, and, and you find your way there. But normally you pick the, the right shade the right block and then you use what we call the effect stains which are here and the enamel stains here so the, out of there yeah we we go if we go to molar we go with a fissure stain we hardly ever use it these days anyway we go for khaki and we go normally for a blue enamel it's just effect stains right just to lift it a little bit now and then we need to of course have our glaze so we've got our Sertra Glaze and what we also need is maybe if the glaze is a little bit too thick we need to have uh, something like that uh, um, that, is, uh, that is to thin it down okay what else you find in here is you find some pins we don't worry too much about them and you find these pipe firing pads which we're gonna use okay stop all right, now when it comes to uh, um, a glaze and you, you're just not sure if it's sort of become a bit pasty, like mine has been sitting in there for quite a while, you can uh, take some out. If you don't have anything else but a brush, that's fine. Just uh, stick some either on a piece of glass or I got here uh, like a mixing palette. So I just stick some on here. Then I can use my, um, my liquid to thin it down a little bit. So you go just very little, just a drop, and maybe put a drop next door. So you can actually dip your brush in there as well. So you want to have a sort of honey consistency, but the way it works best uh, to check whether your glaze is uh, thin or thick enough is when you put some on your thumb and, and you see the brush strokes disappear, then that's all good, but if they don't disappear, if they so you still see all the brush strokes, then it's too thick. So, so here you see now it doesn't drop off the brush, yeah. But it's I, I can uh, pick up a good lump, so that means it's the right consistency. Um, all right, now what else you need before you actually knock yourself out with stain and glazing? You need to make sure. So you got your crown here. You need to make sure you you got a bit of a, a strategy how to put it onto your uh, onto your um, tray. Now, when it comes to trays, a lot of the the um, the dentists that have a Vita furnace, they have these trays, right? Ideally, we want to have a honeycomb tray, which you can order from us. If they don't have one, order one for the uh, customer. But in the meantime, you have to work with what they got. So, out of these two, pick that one. Don't pick the metal one, pick the light brown one, take out the pins, and then that's where the firing pad comes in. That just goes on here, right? And the crown can go straight onto the firing pad. That's simple, okay? Now, you need a pair of tweezers, and if you don't have anything like that, then I'm sure the practice has got two pairs of tweezers. Yeah. So what I do is, when you, you first have your access strategy so you hold your crown somewhere on the lingo so you can actually brush onto it but then when you're finished with it you want to be able to pick up your crown by the contacts like that let that one go and put that on there all right you kind of do a dry run before because you want to make sure you you know because after you've done it all you don't want to start off working on your on your on your strategy okay so I worked that out, I'm happy with that. Now I open up my stains. 
This is dark brown one, the khaki is here, and then my blue for incisal, right? Actually, I'll leave these like that so you can see what they were. Okay, now, what I do first is I put on some glaze, right? So I'm going to grab it by the lingo. So I take my brush. If you need to clean your brush in between in water like that, then make sure you wipe it on a, on a clean tissue. It needs to be dry. Yeah? Don't put water into your glaze. It needs to be dry. Now I can go, I uh, have my, my premix glaze. I can wet my brush a little bit in the liquid, which I put next door here. And I can now pick up some glaze and I can just simply brush it on from the tips down so you don't put anything on the incisor. So I just put a little bit lingual, right? So I, that, because that's where I grab it with my tweezers. So I grab it there. Now I can go on. You notice I, I sometimes drop some excess off on my thumb, which I can later on pick up. We don't put it on too thick, just evenly all around and when it comes to the occlusion you just always go from the center out to the tips right in both directions so you don't create a puddle in the middle right so if, so far so good right there you go so it's all glazed now yeah should use a little bit more light there okay now i can do a little bit of effect staining so when it comes to give it a little bit of a, what we call a neck color, so I go into my khaki and can go straight into the bottle. Or if I, I can put some in the mixing palette as well. Again, put some on my thumb so it's not too, too hefty. And then I just dip it on, yeah? So I just do little dips, because I don't want to brush off my glaze. Just want to dip some on there. Dip, 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 dip. Yeah, just about around the neck and then I also do a little bit in the center and I can be a little bit messy here actually a bit messy is good because messy means it is um, it's more natural right so now I want to do uh, maybe and that's very rare that is only an option doctor yeah, if you want a fissure stain, so you go just like a bip and a bip and the deep spots and you just get a little bit of a fissure stain, right? If these days a lot of, uh, you know, doctors and patients don't like fissure stain anymore, but if you do, that's what you do. And then incisal, uh, if even necessary, that is just giving the, you put that on the cast tips just like that, dab, 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 and around the marginal ridges here, just on the top, and it gives it, lifts it a little bit translucency-wise. Now, if you see it full on blue, that means you have put too much, right? So you barely see it. But the whole crown now looks like, uh, you know, a little bit different. Now, all I do is, so I've done basically, all I do is now I grab it on my contacts, like I showed before, right? and put it on there and now that goes into the furnace right so all you do now is these trays they have a little uh, little recess there so you can just grab it there and then we start our program furnace opens up and you see now putting it in when it's cold is not an issue but if I wanted to take it out then and it's hot I have something to grab it on. And then I press uh, start and I'm done.